When it comes to science, and I guess a lot of other things, including politics and including climate, um, 2023 was a pretty crazy year. Lots and lots of things happened, and some of those things were maybe not so nice. But in terms of actual announcements from various government agencies, from various scientific communities, or even scientific discoveries in general, this year was really extreme. I mean, just look at some of these stories recently. We had the room temperature superconductor, which by the way we're going to be discussing really soon once again, because this story apparently did not finish yet. But yeah, as you probably learned from the previous videos, it was basically bad science. We also had some really unusual stories in regards to UFOs and aliens, including the Mexican aliens, side note, also not real, but we'll probably talk about this one day in the future. And we of course had those UFO hearings from the US, with even NASA at some point joining in and creating a committee to investigate all of this. I haven't really talked about it much, mostly because it's just not very interesting and is going to lead nowhere. But we'll discuss this later, I promise. And so here we are, almost at the end of 2023, and it looks like we have maybe one more story to talk about. The story that just came out and the story that is also maybe not going to go well scientifically, but is still really, really interesting to investigate just because of the sheer scope of what's been achieved so far. Today we're going to be talking about the concept of the impossible drive, or more technically, quantum drive. The mysterious engine that is able to produce propulsion without any fuel. And actually, before I start, there's a video in the description that actually talks about the EM drive studies in quite a lot of detail. Do check it out as well, because it covers the other topic really well. But today we're not discussing the EM drive, we're actually discussing a somewhat different proposition that actually does involve physical explanations and, I guess to some extent, real science, but also a proposition that might actually have a few mistakes in it. And so, how oh, wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss the idea of quantized inertia once again, and let's talk about the quantum drive that is literally now in outer space. It's actually physically there. And you can even track it yourself by using one of the links in the description below. But before we talk about this mission and what's being tested, let's I guess start with a bit of a theory, because this is really important for understanding what's actually happening here. And here the story starts with this British professor, Mike McCall. He essentially proposed a somewhat interesting explanation involving inertia as a concept. I mean, we sort of understand what inertia is and I guess how it works, and Newton explained everything here mathematically really well. I mean, by itself, inertia is defined as a tendency of an object to stay in motion or to stay at rest unless there is some kind of a force applied to it. You push something, it starts moving, and it's going to keep moving unless something pushes on the other side or pulls at the object to make it stop. And though Newtonian physics explain inertia in terms of action and in terms of what happens to objects, it doesn't actually explain why it happens. As in, why exactly do we have to push something in order for it to move? What's stopping it from moving by itself? And so unlike in the regular inertia, the idea of quantized inertia in essence tries to connect relativistic ideas with quantum ideas and then explain Newtonian physics. And by itself, the initial explanation when you hear it makes quite a lot of sense. And so here is roughly how it's explained. You might be familiar with the idea of the event horizon around black holes. It's essentially the point of no return. Nothing can escape the event horizon, which as a result creates the blackness of the black hole. With the exception of the mysterious Hawking radiation, which is believed to be produced around the black hole as a result of quantum physics. Here, sometimes, a particle-antiparticle pair is created in such a way where one of the particles escapes, other one falls into the black hole, resulting in the production of actual radiation, and also taking away a little bit of the mass from the black hole itself. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, but in a nutshell, Hawking radiation has been physically proven using various analog black holes. This image is actually from a study using analog sound black holes that were able to produce Hawking radiation. This was discussed previously in one of the videos right there. And so when it comes to black holes, event horizon and Hawking radiation have almost certainly been proven by using various analogs. But something extremely similar technically happens all around us at the edges of the observable universe. Because here, due to the sheer expansion of the universe at some point, right at the edge, things are expanding much faster than the speed of light. And so it actually creates another type of a horizon. But it's not called event horizon, it's known as the Rindler horizon. The horizon all around the universe that to some extent acts as the actual event horizon of the universe. But here, let's imagine this. 
we're going to start accelerating toward one single point into one direction in this three-dimensional sphere. And as we're moving across here, we're going to experience a kind of a shift in the Rindler horizon. In other words, the sphere itself is going to start shifting, but because we're accelerating, it's also going to shift the Rindler horizon in this way. If we accelerate less, the Rindler horizon expands, and if we stop, it goes back to where it was originally. Mike Mokolo has a pretty good explanation about this in one of his blogs in the description. And so in that sense, the idea here is that this event horizon moves as we accelerate into a certain direction. But here's the thing. Just like with black holes, this event horizon has its own Hawking radiation. And it's known as the Unruh effect or Unruh radiation. And the proposition here is that, well, when you accelerate into a certain direction, you're actually going to experience more of those particles hitting you because of the Unruh radiation. In other words, very similar concept of particle-antiparticle pairs, or basically Hawking radiation, is going to also occur as you accelerate in a direction because of this Rindler horizon or the event horizon of the universe. Or just to make it super simple, as you accelerate this way, you'll basically start getting more radiation into your face coming from the universe itself, coming from the horizon itself. And this in terms of quantum physics and in terms of relativistic physics is kind of sound. It sort of makes sense. But it hasn't been physically proven yet. There are physical experiments that are trying to discover if unruh radiation exists. Once again, you can find out more about this in one of the videos right there. But for now, we don't really know. But based on this principle, McCall essentially proposes that, okay, well, maybe this is actually how inertia works. If you push the object this way, the unroll radiation pushes back and creates inertia. If the object starts accelerating, because of the pressure from the unroll radiation, it has to constantly create acceleration using propellant, which in essence, to some extent, explains inertia as an actual physical force by using quantum mechanics and by using gravitational theories. And when most people hear this explanation, it sort of, I guess, blows their mind and it suddenly makes a lot of sense. But here's the problem though, actually there's like maybe a couple of problems. First problem here is that, in terms of the actual physics, unroll radiation is believed to be extremely weak, like we're talking about imperceptible. As in you have to create accelerations of ridiculous proportions, basically something that only atoms experience, in order to even feel one degree of difference or even to feel just a little bit of radiation. Which is why trying to prove this experimentally so far has been almost impossible. And because of this, most scientists do not think that it explains inertia at all. And the second problem, and I guess a much more serious problem, was the fact that back in 2019, someone actually found mathematical errors in the original proposition that have not been addressed since. And so for all we know, this quantized inertia principle, even though it sounds kind of interesting and sort of unique and very, very cool, might have been just a miscalculation and some kind of a mathematical error. But McCullough still believes this idea, and so do a lot of other people. And here's the thing, they actually conducted a few experiments. But not experiments involving unruh radiation or trying to discover it, they conducted experiments based on some of the propositions in their theory. And the proposition is basically, just like with the EM drive, you can use this inertia to physically create propulsion inside a certain shape by using nothing but electricity. In other words, you can create a no propulsion drive, the impossible drive, or in this case, the quantum drive. And that is why a few years ago, McCall actually got a grant from DARPA to try to investigate this, even though maybe the physics did not work out at first. And so they actually physically started doing experiments and a lot of them potentially might have been positive, as in they actually maybe produce propulsion. But as you might have learned from the video on the EM drive, we know that sometimes this is just a bias or even some kind of a mechanical problem, the problem that was discovered with the EM drive as well. And so what's happening here? Well, to be honest, we don't really know. But one of the US companies basically tried to test it as well and potentially might have found positive results as well. And well, they didn't just test it in a lab, they then decided to send it to space. And so the company known as Ivo Limited in collaboration with Rogue Space Systems, basically managed to launch their project on a SpaceX rocket. With the project itself resembling something like this. It's basically a CubeSat that inside of it contains this unusual quantum drive engine that unfortunately we know very little about because in this case the company keeps it hush-hush about how exactly it was made and what the structure of it is on the inside. They're basically making it a patent. I mean, their Iowa quantum drive if it works, would be obviously groundbreaking. And if it doesn't work, it just means that 2023 was just a year of a lot of fluky, unusual science. But for several days now, this satellite has been essentially active in space 
and has been getting ready for its relatively long experiment. With the experiment in this case being super simple. It's just going to turn on the engine, which only requires electricity, and if everything works, it's going to use the effects from quantized inertia to acquire a tiny amount of boost. But how much of a boost? Well, basically just as much as the EM drive. Every single watt of electricity is supposed to provide 52 millinewtons of thrust. And that actually beats the very efficient whole effect thrusters, or basically ion engines, currently used in a lot of different NASA missions. It would be essentially 60 to maybe 80% more efficient and, more importantly, not require any fuel. Ion engines do require, for example, xenon, which can run out after a few years, and are also very massive and extremely large in size. In comparison, the quantum drive would require no fuel, only electricity, and would only weigh approximately 200 grams or about 7 ounces. And so, right now, honestly, this is maybe one of the most exciting missions in outer space, and at least in theory, once again, just like that superconductor, may finally lead to some major discoveries. With a little bit of a caveat again. It might all be based on bogus science. Even though the engineers behind the startup did confirm that they tested this in every single way on planet Earth, and don't think that the effects they observed were from any biases or from any interferences. In other words, they actually did measure thrust and cannot explain why. But that was on Earth. If it works in space, now that's going to be a tremendous breakthrough. That's basically going to transform everything. But will it? Well, we're probably not going to know until 2024. It's actually going to take several weeks to collect all of the data, and that's actually just to set the baseline for what's happening. And then, in 2024, they're going to finally begin the experiment and start official measurements. And obviously, if the mission is successful, yeah, let's start packing our bags, we're going to Mars. Although I guess you can go to Mars, I'm gonna go to Titan, that's my favorite. But if it's a failure, the satellite does not change its orbit, no thrust whatsoever, which I think might actually happen, unfortunately. But yeah, let's not be too negative. I mean, I do want to believe. And so yeah, if the results are negative, well, for this particular startup, it's technically still not bad news. They basically did all of this as a kind of self-promotion. It basically shows everyone that they can go from a crazy idea to an actual physical test in just a few months, which is precisely what happened here. But in reality, right now, nobody really thinks it's going to work. And there are so many reasons why this is so. For example, this paper from 2015 specifically explains why nothing like this should work at all. It directly violates laws of thermodynamics. Likewise, previous experiments by various teams potentially discovered that all of the measurements here might have been the result of the interaction with the magnetic field of planet Earth. And so there was no thrust, it was just the magnetic field doing something funny. And so at least for now, I think I would see this as, I guess, a fun attempt, an interesting experiment, and definitely something really cool, but most likely not something super groundbreaking, as we'll discover in the next few months. And yeah, we'll definitely be talking more about this once there are some updates. In the meanwhile though, I'm actually going to be talking about LK99 Superconductor once again, because there have been some interesting updates very recently as well. And if you want to find out more about that, subscribe and check out some of the previous videos in the description. On that note, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye. Oh wait, no. I also want to visit Europa, and maybe Ganymede, and potentially... Um, Pluto? Can I make a list?